Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India We are going to continue this lecture on the Li and Huang and we will see uh, complete the ecosystem model. We have seen in the, in the previous case, uh, in the previous lecture, uh, one part of the ecosystem, the service chain, we have mapped the service chain and we will see the other part of the ecosystem and we will map the ecosystem as well. So before mapping, let us look at the what is the input output model of uh, uh, Li and Huang. You know, look at this, you get uh, uh, the uh, product development design and planning. That is what Lee and Fung does for the customers. Once it is approved, it gets the uh, the supply chain finance and production monitoring, etc. Its inputs are, as we see, in the relationship with suppliers, government and other stakeholders, knowledge of the industry environments and the ecosystem. That is the input that it gives. And other inputs are resource and knowledge management and source. Of course, it does the sourcing, it does the factory sourcing and all that, but those and also mm, those are a part of uh, uh, the product development design and the planning, supply chain planning, etc. But the input output, in the input output model, we have an input. These are all the five inputs that come from Lee and Fang and the output is on time delivery of desired products to its customers. So, this is, this is, you can closely see that uh, uh, what are the kinds of that in, uh, things that are involved, the inputs that are involved or the inputs required for any orchestrator. Uh, but let us see. Uh, uh, these things more clearly. Now here, if you look at B, that is the business or the service chain or supply chain, is the design, engineering and production planning, raw material and component sourcing from suppliers and quality control, testing, logistics, information services and finance and finally supply chain execution. These are all the business functions of the uh, uh, the service chain and uh, we call it bird because the uh, of this reason. I are uh, the institutions, what are the institutions that is the governments, labor factors choosing sourcing countries based on cost and quality, trade agreements, multi-fiber agreement, quota access, export and import regulations, local and international tensions. There could be some problems between the country or uh, and, and internationally. Cultural differences, the difference in the supplier's operating culture. So these are important about the quality. These are the institutional factors and social factors. And the resources, knowledge of suppliers across the globe, relationship with all the suppliers in its network, staff who are experienced in executing various tasks involved in the services, IT logistics and financial assets. And the delivery mechanisms are, it is not just logistics, connecting and scanning information with participants and points in the supply chain, linking with the customer computer systems, adopting customers in-house software system, centralized back office systems using IT to coordinate logistics control room that links all the facilities to the headquarters. This delivery mechanism is the one that makes the supply chain execution possible. <coughs> we call this bird because these are the business functions. I mean this is comes from the service uh, chain and these are the resources and these are the uh, institution functions. So basically anybody has to uh, get these functions done with the constraints of the institutions, with the resources they have using the delivery mechanisms. 
So, you can see the importance of this, these act as constraints, these are the resources that you use here to manu to uh, uh, perform these functions and these are the delivery mechanisms that you have. So, let us map the Liang Fang ecosystem. So, what are the industry value chains as we have gone through this several times, design, engineering and production planning. And you have another one is material and factory sourcing, quality control, IT, finance and logistics and order monitoring and execution. These are the four functions that we have seen in the, in the service chain uh, that we have. What, what happens here is design, manufacturing and production planning, each of these functions will have another service chains and similarly when you are sourcing the materials, you have to basically have a, another service chain so that whatever, wherever you are sourcing, you have to check the quality, you have to choose a logistics provider and send it where it is, it has destined to and so on. So, each of these have their own service chains in this. And of course, what are the resources? The country staff, each in other words, these are and found staff in each country, information collection and business connections. Their function is just to connect with people and also connect the information and pass it on to the headquarters. And connections with and with and knowledge about the industry clusters, if there are any clusters, industry partners, human resources with needed talent, finance and training and resources financial and training resources. So, basically this is the resources that we have and in institutions, customs, export, free trade agreements, multi-fiber agreements, quotas and other regulators, quality control and environmental issues, political, social, financial and trade issues. So, these are important social, political and economic issues and trade issues are the ones that are important for the institutions. Delivery finance, logistics and IT coordination, links with suppliers back office and data collection and machine learning. So, if you look at uh, the, uh, the supply chain, if you have drafted this or if you have drawn this then and now go back and see uh, this one then probably any orchestrator like Lee and Fang can come up with what are the kinds of uh, what are the kinds of competencies that they should have and so on. Of course, in this particular case, I am drawing this after uh, so that you learn about what Lee and Fung does and you can map this and so on. But on the other hand, if you have a, a hypothetical orchestrated system with, uh, with some kind of thing, then you can still come up with the same kind of thing and uh, generate what are the kinds of competencies that they should have, what should be the core competency and so on. So, uh, it is possible to do that in the, in the reverse direction also. So, let us look at what are the resources uh, here. The resources that uh, uh, that Li and Fang has, Li and Fang has ties with more than 8000 factories in 40 countries. So, it has to manage uh, people in 40 countries, so it has to keep data about 40 countries, their trade and regulations, uh, cultures and so on and also 8000 factories it has to keep the, uh, the data, enables low cost large scale manufacturing using more than one factory for an order. This we have seen uh, even earlier that the capacity of the factory may not be enough, so it may use more than one factory in more than one country. The benefit of re resilience relies on relying on a few manufacturers has risks of losing projects because of drop in quality, insufficient manufacturing capabilities and financial problems, etc. So, one thing is why 8000? See, you should understand one thing, when you have more number of this one, you may have resilience. In other words, if one supplier factory closes down for some reason, you have others who can do the same thing, but you have the coordination costs of coordinating with all these factories and if it is in 40 countries, then you have to maintain maintain relationship with all these governments and customs 
and and so on and also keep the information of what are the changes that are happening in various free trade agreements and trade relations and so on so there is a low cost manufacturing and there is a benefit of resilience but there is also a coordination cost that happens connections with 8000 factories each with 5000 workers provides access to over 4 billion workers though the network though its network the company gets the benefit without having to manage through its network the company gets the benefit without having to manage 4 million workers all this is fine but there is the coordination that is required and there are coordination costs that are required and the governance becomes governance which we are going to see becomes more tough so what are the technologies in the service chain business information based decision making or data based decision making is fundamental for new and found business developments in iit can be uh, can be a threat in other words you can easily get commoditized or the disruptive technologies that are happening in IT like big data and all that and it is very important that people uh, the, the employees of uh, Lee and Fung get access to machine learning and big data techniques that are happening uh, coming in this otherwise if some other company gets on top of these kinds of technologies much earlier than Lee and Fung then there is a that becomes a threat so in 1997 for example uh, in the first uh, information technology revolution B2B exchanges began to expand with the speculation that traders like Li and Fang will be disintermediated Li and Fang started studio direct which it shut down in two years so they thought they, everybody thought in those days B2B exchanges are connections between companies and people are going to trade over these exchanges so, but then what the B2B exchanges does not provide and what people like Lee and Fung provide is the trust and is the, is the confidential information about the suppliers and so on. So, you can still buy using an exchange. It's like buying on the internet. The relationship that Lee and Fung seeks with its customers is narrow and deep. It's not one point of contact but a multi-level issue, CEO to CEO, manager to manager, shipping clerk to shipping clerk, etc. So that's the kind of relationship it maintains. While technologies such as video conferencing, internet advertising, RFID tax for supply chain visibility, etc. can aid human decision making, human's touch still remains an advantage. So that's the benefit that uh, uh, this one. But on the other hand, Li and Fang also uh, 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 follows and it also follows track, keeps track of the disruptive, disruptive technologies as they are happening like uh, uh, let it be video conferencing, let it be Wi-Fi or mobile and updates itself with those. So what are the, the things, I mean we looked at the, in the ecosystem, we looked at the service chain, we looked at the resources and we looked at the service we look at the now service delivery mechanisms what are the service delivery mechanisms there are four c's of Li and Fung connections we have been saying this because that's one of the takeaways from this particular uh, Li and Fung case is the that how important are the connections the government contacts in Hong Kong and Beijing the ability to reduce impact of quota restrictions and so on so there are several advantages of uh, uh, of having connections with the government and of course communications when you have 8000 suppliers for 40 countries and you want to collect information and you want to monitor what is happening in all this uh, all the factories everywhere and also all the logistics uh, in, in, in various uh, trucks, ships and so on it is important to have a communication system and of course control of quality in terms of attention to detail and consolidation of shipments. So one of the ways in which if you are only a single supplier, single manufacturer trying to get your this one, your products, supposing one big retailer wants to get products 
and it contacts all the suppliers that Lian Fang has and get the shipment. But then it has shipment is solo. It may not have the scale to basically consolidation so that it can go in in several containers and uh, so that the transportation cost is cheap. So that's one of the consolidation of shipments is another advantage that it has. So one can look at four C's so connections, communications, control of quality and attention attention to detail and consolidation of shipments which is the logistics. These are the four strengths of uh, and all of them help in terms of the service delivery. For example, the connections, of course, they act as the oil for uh, basically getting your customs and other clearances quickly and you save time, you save on uh, your safety inventory, safety stocks and so on. Your communications, of course, help uh, 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 in, in terms of uh, uh, keeping in touch with uh, this one and of course we know that information can always replace inventory and there is cost saving and there is the attention cost of quality and the quality can be basically checked through video conferencing and all that and consolidation of shipments of course there is a cost advantage. So the, these are the four things which are service delivery mechanisms which uh, uh, qualities of service delivery mechanisms which help. And IT logistics, IT as a core strength, sophisticated IT and centralized back office systems. <coughs> so as we said in the, this one, for every order, the front end and the back end are done in Hong Kong. And the middle, labor intensive portion <coughs> is dispersed over the globe, over the Asia Pacific. And there is all the supply, 8,000 suppliers who are there, they keep in touch with the headquarters. So there is a sophisticated uh, centralized back of system with a lot of data mining, this one, focused on connecting and sharing information across headquarters, customers, sourcing offices, and factories, warehouses, etc. So there is an information transfer, uh, information that goes on, and this is basically the velocity of this particular information could be, the information transfer could be very high and the volumes certainly are high and so the variety of the data, it could be uh, audio, it could be telephone data, it could be, it could be video or it could be data. So this is basically a typical big data that goes in, in the, in the uh, IT and logistics scenario. And logistics is very important, the physical transfer of goods is very important and managed very well. As each product travels across supplier countries moving in most optimized value chain for it to assume in the finished form. You can see that when, when, you, when you look at the example I gave that something is done in Korea and then it transferred to Taiwan and then finally it goes to Th Th Thailand and so on. So why is this transfer taking place? I mean is it, it looks to, to, to conventional wisdom, it looks that it, is, it will be cheaper if it is done at one all places because there are transportation costs involved, there are loading unloading costs involved, there are coordination costs are involved. If adding all this, if it is, is it still cheaper to do it at different places? The answer is a big yes. And why? It is because of the logistics which it maintains. So it basically the, the the coordination and the logistics functions of Lee and Bank are extraordinary and that is what makes the whole thing, uh, the whole thing very cheap. What are the other values added services that uh, uh, Lee and Fung, this one? One is uh, the in terms of the delivery mechanism, knowledge management service. Well, one thing is to acquire knowledge and the other thing is to manage the knowledge and pass it on to the people who are making the decisions. So you have the country uh, uh, centers in each country who collect the information, but that information need to be transmitted to the uh, uh, to the people in Hong Kong to who are the who are in charge of the customers, so that when our customer order comes, these people use this information 
to select the suppliers and also I mean they select suppliers for each product each this one. So, there is the this collection of this information in the, the three stages of, uh, of uh, the governance structure. The first one is to collection of all the and pooling all the suppliers at all the places. So, that is a knowledge management service. Monitoring suppliers work on its customer orders. How is the supplier performing? Has they started it on time? Is the quality good? Are the resources available? So, is the issue. Assure quality and on time delivery. So, basically your suppliers have to deliver to you on time and you should deliver to your customer on time. And of course, the same quality products. One thing is the quality assurance becomes <coughs> a tricky issue because you are manufacturing across the globe and the same product is, is coming from several factories. So, several uh, the, the, the issue becomes uh, very important for it to monitor. And of course, there is supply chain finance design and planning in the supply chain. So, basically the supply chain finance events, you know, you basically finance your suppliers, your logistics providers and so on because the supplier, supposing the bank and the supplier goes been bankrupt and if it is then a critical product where the capabilities are rest only with that supplier, then what do you do? You have to finance them and then of course you will get it back when the product is sold. So, these are value added functions apart from the IT and logistics and so on. And quality assurance is inspect, supervise an order and it varies with the complexity of the manufacturing process. Well, if it is dolls, if there is a lead paint that comes in and there could be some product recalls that may happen and suppliers degree of experience with Lee and Fung and its cost here. So, basically the manufacturing process, its complexity and the suppliers experience with Lee and Fung, they matter, you have to inspect and supervise each order. I think depending on the particular product, I mean if you are, if you are an apparel industry, it may not be very uh, uh, critical, but if you are in the in the soft dolls and so on, soft goods industries, then it may become an issue if where the people things like lead, lead paint or if you are in the food industry, contamination or adulteration, these are the kinds of good issues could be could be uh, an issue here, but. Of course, for Lee and Fang, it is in the, in the textile business, so this may not be a big issue. But still, uh, the quality become is an important issue. This. So, what are the institutions? This one. What are the governments and so on doing? We covered some of these factors earlier, but still, let's put them together. So, international division of labor. I mean, like the Adam Smith division of labor across in the local sense. Now, what uh, Lian Fang or the orchestrator does is to do the uh, division of labor in the international sense. So, allocation of production to least expensive countries and hence dependent on the labor on the labor prices and frequent changes in the relationships between labor costs in the different countries. They are basically the labor costs keep changing. For example, in China and India, every 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 year there is a there is a change uh, in the uh, this one because the adjustment to the inflation just and also the same people if they are there then they require promotions and salary enhancements and so on. And challenge always is to chase productive low cost labor around Asia. So, what now happens is if you are sourcing from China and if the cost advantage of China is lost, in other words, if the labor becomes expensive in China and the power costs become expensive, then you have to find some other countries. You go to some other country to where it is cheaper to do the same task. So, this chase productive low cost labor around Asia is an important thing that 
that is uh, they, they, they look for. So basically that is where there are frequent changes uh, that happen in the country sourcing uh, this one. And what about trade restrictions? So nowadays after the financial crisis in 2008, countries have turned protectionist and countries like United States including Europe they have turned protectionist and so there is each country is imposing different restrictions such as tariffs or quotas or imports from each trading partner complicating the estimates of cost of manufacturing. So basically what happens is because of these restrictions supposing the tariffs increase so that means your logistics costs increase. Once the logistics costs increase, your product costs increases. So, and also, if you have a trading partner from China, and if the uh, then the country imposes several restrictions on that, then the cost from China increases. So earlier it was cheaper, now it increases. So it becomes you have to do some kind of online execution or uh, selection of these partners uh, because things are changing constantly. Most important bring being the multi-fiber agreement for textiles since textile dominated its business. This multi-fiber agreement is, is where as I said before is quota system. Each country is allocated certain quota and in other words if you are in Vietnam, Vietnam can export either to Europe or US total so much, so much of in dollar, dollar terms so much of exports. So, then in other words so how does uh, to, to take advantage of this multi-fiber agreement you can you may you may try to source it from China because it is cheaper but their quota is over so you have to go to the next cheaper country. So the constraints of sourcing come from not only the cost not only the government regulations but also the global agreement arrangements like the multi-fiber agreements. So yearly quotas for the amount of each textile product that could be exported by each low cost country to each high cost country that is the multi-fiber agreement. So that also matters a lot for uh, 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 in terms of uh, the institutions, they are the economic factors. So when we are talking of uh, the, the ecosystem when you are selecting your suppliers, your selection of suppliers depends on one thing is the cost of the labor and also the cost of uh, the uh, trade, uh, the tariffs and also the quotas, quotas come in as a, as a constraint in your problem when you are trying to uh, do this. So these institutions play a very important role. Uh, particularly when you are doing uh, the sourcing of uh, the factory sourcing. And of course this uh, people have used it to advantage if you if your quota in China is over then you establish a factory or help somebody to establish a factory in Vietnam, Cambodia and so on and source it from there. So because you can use the uh, this one. But the multi-fiber agreement in 2005 or 2006 there was a move to cancel this but uh, the cancellation has not been that effective. Okay, let's look at uh, this one. So what we did so far is to map the ecosystem. So what is the ecosystem? Ecosystem has the service chain which we dealt with this one from the customer order till uh, till the delivery to the customer and uh, the second thing is the resources that we looked at uh, the resources, the delivery mechanisms of various kinds and also the institutions roles in this. So we looked at the investment climate for the service chain and there as I said before, uh, presented before we are looking at uh, 40 countries and 8000 suppliers and about 4 million employees and and so on. So basically this becomes a complicated thing. 
So let's look at once in the ecosystem framework, we use the ecosystem to do four things. One is the grip framework we call the governance mechanism. And the second one is the risk. What are the risks that it faces? Well, of course, if you look at uh, something like Lee and Fung and want to uh, uh, write down all the risks from the ecosystem, this one, well, you can get a lot of risks from the supplier risks to uh, to the government returning protest protectionist risk to the logistics risks and so on. So basically, how does Li and Fang mitigate these kind of risks? These are very common risks that can happen. So if you if you can want to see how the 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 trade changes in the countries is a risk to uh, to Li and Fang, but how does it mitigate it? It mitigates it by having 8,000 suppliers. So 8,000 need not, may not, may not do all same product, but for each product there are at least 10 to 12 suppliers in different countries. And it is always on the constantly on the move to develop uh, connections with suppliers in other new countries which are emerging. So it is that move that Li and Fang makes it to uh, to mitigate the risk of uh, any government changes that can happen and also in the agreements in the quotas and so on. It also mitigates the risk of the resource uh, increases, the prices of increases so on going to low cost countries. So the delivery mechanisms, it has its own logistics. So anywhere in Asia Pacific, however low is the logistics quality, it doesn't affect this. So you can see how nicely the risk is mitigated, the common risk that can happen. Of course, if there is a, a tsunami or a big earthquake and the whole thing goes down, then there is nothing that anybody could do. But in normal times, for deviations and small disruptions, and also the at the government level, at the social level, at the uh, resource level, and at the service chain level, Li and Fang uh, can can manage this. So let's look at the performance. What is performance? Reduction of customer inventory. Now, by spreading speeding up the time to market, we have seen that Li and Fang time to market from design to uh, to delivery is five to six weeks. In other words, if the spring talk starts on our fall starts on September 1st, then July 15th the production starts. So and also the customer can change the order before July 15th. So because of the speed in time market and leveraging supply contracts across factories on production lines, Li and Pang helps customer keep inventory low. So you need not have to keep any inventory because it is a very fast delivery. Usually textile supply chains take to six months to one year. And here is the case where highly customized products are produced and delivered within five to six weeks. So you can see the advantage of inventory. You need not to keep safety inventory. Maximum inventory you have to keep is five to six weeks. Not even that. And if it does this by reserving capacity with standard apparel items, that it can easily switch to expand capacity for fashion sensitive orders. I mean, there are two kinds of orders that lay in front of this one. One is standard apparel orders. You know, you make blankets, you make uh, uh, shirts, bed sheets, whatever, those kind of this one. And sometimes there could be fashion sensitive orders, like, uh, you know, you want everybody likes red color, everybody wants stripes. And so on. So whenever there is this one, they, they since they, they know the the suppliers, you can switch the capacity. And they, they by reserving the capacity, they can switch either standard items or fashion sensitive items. So that is the reduction in the customer event. And what about price and quality? Li and Fang's different product divisions have quality control managers responsible for types of products within defined regions. In other words, 
these are athala products or whether ladies children or uh, or men the the quality or if it is doing soft goods like uh, uh, baby dolls and so on so for each of them the managers are responsible one of li li fang's major strengths uh, a particularly difficult task when manufacturing orders are spread among several factories so this is the the this is the major strength of uh, this one is the price and quality by managing the supply chain and ensuring the quality no risk to the customer by managing the supply chain and ensuring quality before shipping an order li and fang reduces returns from unsatisfied customers so there must be a, uh, something in the uh, in in thin lines between the contract that if the customer is not satisfied with the quality then he can return it but by managing the supply chain and ensuring the quality uh, before shipping an order the end fang reduces the returns from unsatisfied sucks so in other words there are three uh, this one and one is cost then the performance in that performance one is the lead time second one is the cost and third one is the flexibility and fourth one is the quality so you have here you can see that the cost is low because reduction of customer inventory and price and quality is all maintained because across the chain the quality is monitored and it is low risk to the customer because by managing the sub the supply chain and ensuring quality before shipping order it reduces the returns and delivery li and fang consolidate shipments to different customers to the same market achieving economies of scale so basically uh, you know it's like walmart having a ship by it for itself and so on so but uh, uh, li and fang has the shipments to united states and and europe so it can consolidate all this and get advantages of scale and of course through proprietary extended clients to look for project status so basically the it network uh, is is super for uh, this and they, they basically they use this to get the project status of each of these clients trade financing to suppliers by providing them with finance financing li and fang can prevent delays due to problems of financing and speed up time to market this is as i said before out of the 8000 suppliers if there is a critical suppliers and they cannot deliver on time because of some financing problems or uh, the letter of credit and so on so then lay and form finances them so if you look at the cost management the cost management reduction you reduce the inventory you ensure quality you ensure the price and you the give delivery customer consolidation and it network use it for this one and you trade finance so because of all this you can manage the cost you can see how closely every process is monitored by by li and fang so this is this is like an execution expert in the process not only planning but it the execution as we said earlier the governance has three steps the first step in the governance is selection of your partners getting all the partners and getting it up on the network the second one is the planning for each order for each order select your partners and third one is the execution so you can see in all the three uh, this one the li and fang excels so you can see one of the things that we were uh, talking about is uh, can li and fang be disintermediated in other words uh, can somebody take over what is it? supposing there is a, an order for 10 million right so com com uh, commission paid if order is placed through li and fang at 7% say li and fang gets 700000 So this for ten million, you have to pay seven hundred thousand at seven percent. 
But supposing that fellow says, look, I don't want to pay 700,000, it's just this one. But I want to do everything by myself. If this fellow wants to do everything, replicating whatever Lian Fang does, his cost of maintaining maintain a Hong Kong office and expatriate office manager and salary benefits, 20 staff at 30,000 a year, rent and other expenses, it will come to 1,360,000. This is the real, the real cost at that time and so you save 680,000. So in other words, savings from using Li and Fang is this and on the other hand, even if you spend all this, 1 million, you are not sure of your quality because you have to basically spend all your time and worry about the quality and all that. But by giving 7% to Li and Fang, you are not only saving 680,000, which is almost like half of what you spend, you are also assured of sense of the uh, that of a product quantity and time delivery and so on. So that's the kind of advantage that Li and Fang this one uh, gives. So if you want to beat Li and Fang, then you have to be you have to bear all these costs and see well, how how you can reduce it to seven hundred thousand and so on. So let's uh, look at that's about the cost and the performance uh, and quality and so on. So finally, the final one is the uh, that we are looking at the governance. So as I said, governance, as we see it as, uh, in the pre previous three chapters, it has uh, previous uh, this one, it has uh, uh, three things. One is the selection of uh, partners, and and second one is the supply chain planning, where for each order. You, you select your suppliers and logistics providers and so on. And third one is the execution. So let's see. Now, William Fang follows the following governance model. Build the company around the customer. Now, you can see that the customers of William Fang are all business, this one. So they're big customers. So each customer wants, wants attention to them. So, there is, there, there is, it's a customer oriented company. So for each customer, there is a manager and so on. The supply chain starts with the customer's need and ends with customer's solution. So that's the governance model that it follows. And customer focused divisions. Uh, the building blocks of Li and Fung, this one. Each of them is kept small and entrepreneurial and is run by a lead entrepreneur. Lian Fang provides them with financial resources and administrative support of a big organization, but each division is given a great deal of autonomy. In other words, the so-called the manager of the division, once he gets the order, he goes through the service chain and the design settles the design and gets the product development team, uh, this one, and designs everything and from there selects the suppliers and the logistics providers, the delivery, and all that is in the hands of the lead entrepreneur who is in charge of this section. So you can see, although Lian Fang is a, is a company by itself, the execution and everything, the selection, the supply chain planning and execution are in the hands of these customer divisions. And the money they make is basically based on this and whatever they save in the soft three, three dollars is goes to this particular division. All the merchandising decisions that go into coordinating the production program for the customer are made at the division head level. Even from maintains a large number of divisions, around 60 and divisions are portfolio that are created and collapse almost at will. In other words, they can, if there is a customer, this one from the US, they can create it. If there is a suddenly some rise uh, of customers from Middle East, they may create division for Middle East 
and once the uh, the demand subsides, they will close it. So it's a basically a very uh, customer based divisions and the, the, the portfolio are created and they can collapse at will and they can create and they can remove the, these things at will. But their functions are the same. Their functions are whatever follow the service chain and deliver the products to the customer at, uh, at the right price, at the right time and at the right place. So what is the organization structure? Each customer is allocated to a division <coughs> that handles all of the customer orders using Lee and Fong network. A division may handle more than one customer. And thus Lee and Fong stand in each division become experts on their customers' needs and develop relations with customer staff. So as I said before, it is the CEO to CEO, manager to manager, clerk to clerk and so on. So that kind of relations happens both with the customers, lead customers as well as with the, with the suppliers. Yes. And members of a division will receive the same commission revenue no matter which supplier they use, thus making them behave impartially. So the point here is it is not the question which supplier you are using, it is the question how much are you making in the soft 3. In the soft 3 dollars, how much are you saving? So you can use anybody as long as you deliver the quality products at the right time, at the right place, at the right price. And also you make money for the company. Compensation heavily depends on the division's financial performance, but not on the choice of supplier for a customer. So that is the kind of drive that it has, where you, the compensation is heavily dependent on the division's financial performance. So there is no preference for suppliers in any country or any particular suppliers in a particular country. but it is only all financial and also professional, professional in the sense it is the performance sensitive, performance in terms of cost which means inventory, which means the speed of delivery and so on and also in terms of the quality of the product so that the customer should not in the end should not return the product saying that it is a low quality product and also in terms of uh, the lead times because everything is done within 5 to 6 weeks they are delivered. So if it is a fall or a summer this one it has to be delivered on time to this one. Centralized support services frees traders from the dredge work. Now if I will show you, I will show you the diagram which shows this one. Now while this is, uh, it is customer centric. There are some services which I said in the, the front end, back end services, the financial services and all organization of logistics and other kinds of things and whatever information that country heads provide to uh, this one consolidation of all that is all done by at in Hong Kong by the office. So these people, the customer centric centers, they are only concerned about the product design product manufacturing and product delivery. They are not concerned about other uh, things like finances, payment uh, and so on and all that. So let us look at the diagram. So you have the managing director of Lee and Farm and there are soft goods, hard goods and services and soft goods are the client account managers <coughs> and there are several of them, several of them you know we said there are 60 accounts at any point in time and each manager <coughs> is responsible for procurement, logistics, quality and delivery. These are the four things that each manager is responsible for each client and we have several of them through this. So these are all the managers of the soft goods and the hard goods the same thing. But 
that is the CCC service center which I was talking about which is based out of Hong Kong where we manage the services of financial, HR, ITES or all other services having country centers to collect information and data mining all that information and this, uh, passing on to them. All these services are done in Hong Kong, they are all centralized. So, here you can see the, the governance structure here, the managing director has all these services. These are all independent of the products, whether it is soft goods or hard goods. But each of these people, they get the information as they need about the country and that will enable them to make the decisions and so on. So, if you call it data based information based uh, decision making or information based decision making uh, or a real time decision making, you can call it whatever you like, but this is the kind of organization structure that enables the data based or information based decision making in the Leon Fon case. So, what do we did so far is Leon Fong is an excellent example of orchestration. So, and this can be followed in lots of other service industries in agriculture and so on. But if you look at uh, our uh, contribution to this is we are following the ecosystem framework and we were able to map the activities, current activities of Li and Fang into the ecosystem. So, what is the advantage of using the ecosystem framework? and particularly in orchestrator we have. So, you can now generalize these things and in the ecosystem framework and see how, what are the important factors that an orchestrator should do in the ecosystem and what are the kinds of things, the capabilities that they should build up. And as we said the connections, knowledge, database, decision making, these are all the learnings that we got from this particular thing. So, we should, it is a non-trivial uh, learning that we have got uh, from this particular case and it's, if, if it is possible for someone who is interested to generalize all this and write a, write a, a thesis or a, or a paper on orchestrator and what should be the qualities and what are the decision making methodologies that you can use. And of course, here big data cloud computing because all this data and even information everything can be stored on a computing for all in a cloud for all the 8000 partners and for all the countries and they can be accessed and processed and you can use machine learning algorithms for data based decision making for each of these suppliers. At least you can build a decision support system which will help the each of these customer based managers in the decision making. So, thank you and then we will see.